Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the blog app using Django and React.js. In this one, we'll get started working with liking the posts API view. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor and back to your views py. Down here, let's create a new view called like post API view. They should inherit from generics dot create API view. So we've been working with generics view throughout this tutorial. How about we switch gear and work with something else so that you can see how other views works. Now let's work with API view, which means we have, we get to write our own custom API and structure it the way we want it to be. So for this one, I want to create a post. I want to override the post method here and pass in self and requests. So now we'll be writing this just like we write pure Django and not like this, okay? So for this, we should firstly be expecting a user ID that will be passed in a form data from the front end over to the back end. So it should be stored in the requests.data object and we're gonna call it user ID. So this is the key that will be passed from the front end. I need this exact same thing, but instead of user ID, I need the post ID. So to be able to like a post, we need the user ID to know the user that's gonna like the post. And we also need the post ID to know the post that we will be liking. So let's fetch those two informations. To fetch the user, just say API models dot the user model dot object dot get, where the ID of the user is equal to the user ID that was sent to us from the front end. Same for the posts. Post should be equal to API models dot post dot objects dot get where ID is equal to our post ID. All right, as simple as that. Now let's go ahead and check if the post has already been liked by this particular user that we just fetched now. So if user in posts dot likes dot all, why am I doing this like this? Why am I doing it this way? That is because the post model has a field called likes and that field is a many to many field that keeps track of many users that has liked the post. So if this particular user is in the list of all the users that has liked that post, what do we want to do? Now think about it like this. The user has already liked the post, but for some weird reason, they are clicking on the like button again. That means they actually might want to unlike the post. Does that make sense? So let's help them unlike the post. Just say post dot likes dot likes dot remove, and you should go ahead and add the user model over there, which means we are pretty much removing the user from the list of people that has liked the post. Does that make sense? Now you could go ahead and return a response back to the front end to you know notify the front end that something has gone through. And I want to return a message and um, this message should say something like post disliked simple and let's also send a status so the front end knows how to render this message so this one should be status dot http okay status dot http 200 okay which means everything actually went well as expected i want you to take this closing braces and put it over here so that you don't have this error any longer. How about the user does not exist in the list of users that has liked the post, but they keep clicking on the like button. What do we do? Let's go ahead and add them to the list. So post.likes.add, add this user here to the list of people that has liked the post. That's simple as that. So you don't need to actually, you don't need to go ahead and start doing things like maybe creating or saving, maybe saying something like post.save. No, no, no. The add method over here automatically does that for you whenever you add, okay? So now the next thing that we could do is go ahead and create notification. So API models dot notification or objects dot create. What do I want to do? I'm gonna say user should be equal to post.user and the post that was liked should be equal to post and the type of this notification should be like, which means someone actually liked something. 
I'll let you turn the status back to the front end or a response. I'm going to say post liked and 200 or instead let's say 201 created, 201 created. There you go. All good. All done. Let's register this in the URL and see how it works. So I'm registering it over here. I will create a new part for this. And this one will be called post slash like dash post. And the views should be API views dot post like. Wait, what did I call it? Hold on. Let me see. Or oh, is it called like post? Yeah, it's called like post dot as view. Okay, so let's see. Let's refresh this again and see how it goes. There you go. Our server is now running. So now if I get back here and uh, get back here, reload this page. See, I can now like a post. So if you try opening this up, so after accessing this URL, you can see how it looks. Now, you know what I will do? Let me quickly set up... Um, the documentation because I seem to be missing that in the videos. Come over to the source code backend URLs py. So I want you to import all this here in your own backend URLs py. Just go ahead, put it down there, and um, let's see. Also import static and settings. So now that we are needs, let's do all this together. And this is the code to actually configure the documentation. I simply put it over here. I actually got this from their documentation, okay? And um, that's it. Now you can also take this and put it in the parts. So you can put this anywhere you want. Let me put it here. I got all this from their documentation, just so you know, okay? So with all this now, if you visit our port 8000, you can now see that we now have this looking very, very good. So over here, this is like posts. If you try this out, you can see there is no way to type in the user ID and the post ID and actually send it for execution. If you just send this like this, we definitely will get an error saying that, hey, come on, give me a user ID to work with. And we are not giving it any. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to open up the views PY and somewhere here at the top, we need to perform some operation. So the very first thing that we need to do is use or rather tweak the Swagger UI to allow us to pass in user ID and post ID. Now, this is very, very optional and not compulsory. If you're even using a um, an API platform like RESTman or Postman, you don't even need to do this. But it's just because I'm using Swagger UI, that's why I want to do this, okay? And we don't even have to type all this out. It's already in the documentation. We could pretty much just grab it from here. Okay, this is what I'm looking for here. See this code? <laughs> See? So a Swagger UI, then we pretty much tweak the request body to how we want it to look. Please arrange this code so it looks okay. Then the only thing that you should be concerned about here is this too. So now we passed in user ID. It should be an integer. Post ID, you can make it an integer too, okay? So now, when we get back here and reload this page, then come over to like post. Can you now see that it's allowing us to type in the user ID? So I'm going to say one and the post one. This is the post right now. It doesn't have any like, but when we execute, let's see what we have. Post liked. Now, if you reload this admin, see, Destiny is now here, which means Destiny has now liked the post. If you change this to number two, the user ID to number two and execute, see, post likes, which means somebody else has liked the post, J. If you execute again with J, see, post disliked. See, J is gone. Simple. Simple as that, we have created the like um, feature. So now in the front end, all we just have to do is send the user ID and the post ID to this API. And based on whatever gets returned, whether post liked or post disliked, we will then update the front end and also show a message like your post has been liked or turn the thumbnail icon to blue or gray. Hopefully you get a point. So that is pretty much it for the tutorial. As you can see, it's quite simple. It's quite straight to the point and we are done. If you're looking to build websites professionally and faster with modern components, 
check out nestblog.app. I'll drop the link in the description below. You can also check out some of the courses in the description as one of them will help you become a better Python, Django, and React JS developer. I hope to see you in the next video and until then, I'd love, peace out.